Build shows on the road today. Coming to you from Jamestown, Rhode Island. It's a cold day out here and we're talking framing, one of my favorite topics. I got the WKP boys. Today's build show, traditional framing done a little smarter. Let's get going. All right, y'all, you guys know Wade Paquin, right? And Joe, I'm totally blanking on your last name. Babcock. Joe Babcock, uh, project manager with WKP, actually an architect by degree. We're talking smarter framing today. So boys, I pulled up to the job site. I love framing. This looks like traditional framing. Uh, but Joe, the thing that, that made me think, hey, there's something different here, is I noticed this plywood band right in the center of the house that made me think, huh, that's that doesn't look like stick framing. That's not how I would stick frame it. What's going on here? Uh, so what we're trying to do is we got two panels coming to first floor and second floor instead of tying the sheathing at the center we're holding that sheathing off and then trying to tie it in um, the first floor and second floor between those rim joists. Uh, so that gave it away. So this is panelized construction. Talk me through what we're doing here, Wade. What's the company you use? Then talk me through that process of panelizing. Yeah, so this is the uh, second home that we've done now like this with this method. Um, so the walls are panelized and the roof is pre-cut. Okay. Uh, the company we're using is Cape Cod Panel. They're out of the, out of the Cape on, the, on, on Massachusetts. And so basically we go through, you know, Joe's designed the house, so we share CAD programs and then they design uh, the panel system through CAD, wall panels, studs sheathing only, and then uh, rafters, ridges, structural members, everything. Once the foundation's done, we'll come out and frame the deck, first floor system, and then the wall panels show up. These wall panels went up in one day. Then one day, one literally day. the first floor went up in one, one day. day. How about that? And then the uh, second floor system is framed. And then the panels on the second floor go up one day. And then we start taking all the roof rafters and start assembling the roof system. That's all pre-cut. So that goes Holy quickly cow. too. So for what you see here right now, from the day we put lumber on the foundation to uh, they're probably 60% complete on the roof sheathing. We're what, Joe? 17, 17 working days. days. 17 days. 17 days yep. in. That's yep. really fast. Yeah. That's it's amazing to see. And so, Joe, you mentioned earlier that these wall panels, if I'm understanding you right, on the on the first floor, had the sheathing on the panel already. Yep. The upper floor had it, but that band joist was mini, was kind of missing. Why is that? Uh, so we hold off the, the layer sheathing in the center. Um, our reason for doing that is to really tie in that first floor and that second floor wall system. Um, and then we actually... It's also a code requirement here. Code requirement. So it ties the walls together for the shear. And I suspect you need extra shear because we are literally right on the coast, right? Correct. Yeah. So we'll actually be doing another layer of uh, our zip on top of this, but we're getting all our shear from the, the uh, CDX that's here now. Oh, fascinating. Right. So zip R on the outside, Wade. What's yeah. the benefit of that? Because you've already sheathed. Feels like you're putting two layers of sheathing on. What What's the use? Uh, it's just, uh, you know, a lot of clients come to us for how we build, the types of home we build, which are, you know, comfortable, energy efficient homes. And uh, one way to achieve part of that goal is proper wall insulation uh, and having your uh, thermal break. So we're going to be using the Zip R9 here for our oh, exterior insul insulation. Yeah. So we'll have a nice thermal break. It's going to act as our WRB. We're still insulating the, uh, the the exterior walls. We'll be doing a mineral wool with a smart membrane paper barrier on the inside. So okay. you've got your exterior insulation on the zip panel, plus your insulation on the wall. That's fantastic. Yeah. I love it. Now you guys also do a lot of shingle style. Is there that is there an additional benefit to using the zip bar compared to let's say just an exterior insulation here? Uh, well, I mean when you shingle and you're nailing up these shingles there's i don't know how many but probably hundreds of thousands of nails yeah, probably right yeah. or whatever it is like, that's going into uh the wall so to have an entire nail uh, base yeah a tire base yeah. of a solid wood to nail your shingles to is obviously beneficial yeah, that's fantastic complete thermal break with a zip r9 plus a complete nail base that's pretty awesome now joe one thing i'm noticing here is that i don't see any rafter tails but the plywood's hanging off what's yeah. happening here uh so Cape Cod Panels provides all the rafter tails. What we like to do is run that, whether it's sheathing, and in, in, in this case, we're running the R-Zip all the way to the underside of the roof sheathing. And then we attach our rafter tails in there, so we're getting that continuous thermal, as well as WRB uh, is brought up to the underside of the sheathing. 
and then we'll do a uh, liquid flashing between those two joints so that we're having once again a continuous thermal and WRB going from yeah, the wall roof. to roof. That's fantastic. Wait, I've, I've really seen you do some very airtight houses and it makes sense when you're on the coast like this, that wind's blowing off the, the water at 40, 50 miles an hour on a normal day, not even right. a storm day. Right. So having a really tight house makes a big difference, doesn't it? Yeah, it's a huge difference. I mean, you know, with having a proper WRB system and then doing things like we'll probably use uh, a Fentrum tape to connect our bottom of our panel to our foundation. Yep. As Joe said, connecting the roof to the wall um, by having that kind of monopoly house that we all talk about detail between yep. roof and wall. Yep. Um, and then our like mud sill detail and other things that we implement for uh, air sealing techniques obviously make a big difference. Yeah, so that monopoly framing you mentioned, you can really see it here on this gable where the plywood is, is held over uh, to make it simple to add that uh, additional framing that you're gonna need after the air barrier is up. So the zip bar, once it's all taped and liquid flashed to the underside of your sheathing, that's your air barrier. And then you can add that additional framing. So there's nothing uh, poking through that air barrier like rafter tails, which are really hard to detail. It's doable, but it's less good than doing this monopoly framing. I'm really impressed, guys. Anything we missed on this system that you wanna point out? I think a couple things that come to mind when we, we just to talk about this type of system is one, the quality of the lumber mm -hmm. because it's in a controlled environment yep. versus having a bunch of lumber show up to the job site. You kind of, you have what you have when it's here, when you're stick framing it, right? Yeah. So sometimes yeah. you, obviously you throw away stuff that's warped and twisted, but some stuff that maybe is okay to use, sometimes the framers will throw that up as, as a stud or whatever it may be, right? With the factory doing this and they're, they're purchasing the material and they're selecting the best quality material for our studs and the sheath and everything. So there's that factor. And as we uh, all talked about earlier, Joe made up a good point here, is it's a quiet job site. Ah, right? interesting. Not, the saws and everything aren't constant. As, of course, as I say that, yeah, right, you know, say that the, uh, there's an impact trail. <laughs> the impact but, goes up. But you know, as you've been here and yeah. you've noticed, it's been fairly quiet. Yeah. There isn't a lot of compressors running. No. The saws and table saws and that sort of thing isn't going because you're not cutting you know, thousands of pieces of wood. Yeah. It's assembling, so it's nail gun and a couple saws. So the, the neighbor actually came over and she was quite pleased with how quiet the job site's That's been. That's awesome. Except for now. Well, and even, <laughs> even from a timing or from a sound and, and courteous to your neighbor, framing is happening in a short period of time. Yeah. Right. So yeah. even what machines are running for that time is like three weeks tops. And then right. we're starting to get to outside and or outside finishes and interior roughens. So, yeah. and, and we're framing quite a bit quicker. like not even just 10 percent faster right more like what can you give us any rough percentage about Joe? two months yeah on here we've you're about take, two months so we maybe stick frame this uh, versus the system this is we're saving about two months yeah which is maybe 50 percent uh faster or 40 percent faster something like that hard uh, to say exactly i would say yeah probably in the 40 percent range okay. if i yeah. had to guess and i'm assuming you're going to pay a little bit more for panelized right because we're building some of this off-site is that made up in speed, would you say? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. big time. Uh, now guys, if you haven't seen, Wade has a whole arm of his company that builds on Block Island, which is literally several miles off the coast that everything needs boated off. It's actually this direction, I yeah, think, right? Yeah, yeah. Off there off the horizon. Yeah, some, some days, days you can, you can see, see the bluffs right over there, yeah. I'm guessing you guys might start doing this in Block Island as well, Wade. We are, we have, uh, we have a house that Joe has designed in the hopper with uh, Cape Cod panel right now. Uh, the foundation just went in. We're hoping to have panels for that house on the island uh, by mid-January. That's, That's really going to cool. be a game changer for us out there. That's fantastic. Love it. Gentlemen, thank you for an uh, amazing tour. Gorgeous house. Really like seeing this Monopoly framing. I think we got a couple really good tips uh, for people out there. If you guys aren't familiar with WKP, uh, we'll put a link to the Instagram feed. It's at WKP Construction, right? Yep. Uh, and the other thing you need to do is if you haven't seen it, Wade's just wrapping up our Building on an Island series over on thebuildshow.com. That's our Build Show network. He's shooting videos from his amazing Rhode Island job sites and Block Island job sites on a weekly basis. That being said, guys, you know how I finish up my videos, right, Joe? Follow us on TikTok or Instagram. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on The Build, Build Show. Show.